The rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is a measure of how fast an enzyme can convert its substrate into product. So how quickly the reaction gets from here at this point at the start where there's just enzyme and substrate to this point here at the end where there's just enzyme and product. How quickly an enzyme converts a substrate into a product depends on the environment that the enzyme finds itself in. And if the enzyme is in optimum conditions, then the enzyme will be happy and work well. However, if the enzyme finds itself in suboptimal or unfavorable conditions, the enzyme will, will not work as well as it could and the rate of reaction will decrease. Now there are three variables that you need to know about for your exam that can affect the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. They are substrate concentration, temperature and pH. So let's look at each of these in turn. So if we had a series of test tubes, each containing the same concentration of enzyme, but if we added a different concentration of substrate to each of these test tubes and then plotted the rate of reaction in each tube against the substrate concentration, we would get a graph that looks a little bit like this. Now, rate of reaction is always on the y-axis, and it has the units of seconds to the minus one, because it's a measure of change over time, and I'll cover this in detail in a separate video. And the variable that you're testing is always on the x-axis, so in this case it's substrate concentration, and the units of that are molarity, molar. So at a low substrate concentration, we can see that the rate of reaction is also low. This is because there are few substrate molecules per given volume, meaning that there is a low chance that the substrate and enzyme will collide, resulting in a reaction and product formation. If we increase the substrate concentration, so if we move along the x-axis, we see that the rate of reaction on the y-axis increases too, and this happens in a linear manner, so the graph is a straight line to begin with, until the rate of reaction peaks at this point, the enzyme continues to work at its maximum rate of reaction and is saturated with substrate. All the active sites are full and the enzyme can work no quicker. And we could continue to add more and more substrate, so moving along the x-axis further, but once you get past the point of saturation, the rate of reaction on the y-axis can increase no further. So we'd see this flattening out of the graph. We see a plateau. And it's important to remember that increasing the substrate concentration does not denature enzymes. Substrate concentration has no detrimental effect on the bonds within the enzyme's active site. So that's another reason why we see this flat line as the substrate concentration is increased further, rather than a decrease in the reaction rate. The second variable that can affect enzyme activity is temperature. If we had several test tubes, each containing the same concentrations of enzyme and substrates, but each tube was then cooled or heated to a different temperature, the rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction in each tube would be different. If you plotted the rates against each temperature used, then you would end up with a graph a little bit like this. When the temperature of an enzymatic reaction is low, the enzymes and substrate have very little energy and as a result they do not move around as much. This reduces the probability of an enzyme colliding with its substrate and reacting. As the temperature increases, the enzymes and substrates have more energy, move around more and there's a higher probability that the enzyme and substrate will come into contact with one another and a reaction will occur. The maximum rate of reaction occurs at an enzyme's optimum temperature. This is the temperature at which the enzyme works best. So as humans, we function best at 37 degrees, and that's because the optimum temperature of the enzymes in our bodies is 37 degrees. Any deviation away from this optimum temperature would be damaging to us, leading us to be extremely sick or even die. So we have to control our internal body temperature in order to keep our enzymes happy and working well. So not all enzymes across all living organisms have the same optimum temperature. Enzymes found in thermal vent bacteria, for example, have much higher optimum temperatures, and therefore these bacteria are found in hot environments. So going back to the graph, if the temperature starts to exceed the optimum temperature, the enzyme starts to get into a bit of trouble. The excessive heat energy causes the bonds in the active site of the enzyme to break, leading to a change in its shape. This means that the enzyme no longer fits its substrate, as in the lock and key mechanism, and the enzyme can no longer catalyse the reaction, so the enzyme has become denatured.
As a result, the rate of reaction falls until the enzyme does not work at all and the rate of reaction is zero. The final variable that you need to know about that affects the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is changes in pH. If we add several test tubes again, each containing the same concentration of enzyme and substrate, but that were diluted in buffers of different pHs, we would see that the rate of reaction would be different in each test tube. If we plotted reaction rate against pH, the graph would look something like this. The rate of reaction peaks at the optimum pH where the enzyme is working at its best. However, as the pH decreases or increases away from that optimum pH, the rate of reaction starts to decrease in both cases. Changing the pH affects the charges on amino acids that make up the enzyme. So if charges on the amino acids in the active site change, these amino acids will no longer attract or repel each other in the same way, and the shape of the active site will change. And we know what that means. So the shape change means the substrate no longer fits, as in the lock and key mechanism, and the enzyme is denatured and can no longer catalyze the reaction. So this results in a decrease in the rate of reaction because the enzyme can no longer change the substrate into product. Whilst the optimum pH of most enzymes in the human body is pH 7, some enzymes work best at a lower or a higher pH. For example, the protease pepsin works best in the hydrochloric acid found in your stomach. This has a pH of about 2. So you can see that the graph has shifted over to the left because the peak or the maximum rate of reaction is now directly above a lower pH on the x-axis. On the other hand, the pancreatic protease trypsin works best in the slightly alkaline conditions in your small intestine. It has an optimum pH of around 8 and you can see if we draw the graph for this enzyme that the graph has shifted over to the right so that the peak of the graph is now directly above pH 8 on the x-axis. If you would like some free GCSE revision notes that accompany this series of videos, please head over to my website www.drmeclever.com. You'll also find my revision guides here. And if you want to say hello and get updates on my latest work, scrollable revision notes and freebies, you can follow me on Instagram or other social media under the handle at drmeclever. And finally, if you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share. Thank you.